Hello YouTube, this is Scientific AK here, and welcome back to another Pi Game tutorial. I know it's been a while since our last Pi Game tutorial, it was over a month ago. Crazy. Uh, but, don't need OS. Um, we're back, and the code has changed a little since the last tutorial. And I'm going to run you through everything that I've added. Or, I'm going to run you through the entire code again, because I forget what we've actually added. So, uh... This basically just defines if we're running from the command line, it basically tells the command line that we're running Python. If name is equal to main, so if this is the main file, import by game, import by game locals from player, import player. I made a simple player class, which I'll get onto in a second. Window width, a window height, these are constants. If a variable uses capital letters and underscores, it's a constant, which means its value should never change, because our window isn't going to be resizable. Window size equals window... Width, that should actually be window height. Running goes true. Title, the most awesome game ever. A clock. FPS. Uh, a window, taking a window, says. A player object, taking our window. Uh, we set the caption to the title, or the title, and we define an update function, which calls player.update. And a draw, which calls player.draw, which haven't been defined in here, and we'll define that together. While we're while running is equal to true. For event in pygame.event.get, if event.type is equal to quit, quit. If event.type is key down, and the key is Q. So if we press a key on the keyboard, and the key is key.q, then quit. If we, don't forget, here, if we didn't import pygame.locals, we'd have to say... Game, but we don't because we import pygame.locals. So you only have to uh, say event.k is kq and k escape. Uh, so if we press a key and the key is the q key, then quit. Same with escape, except it just checks for escape. We call it update and draw uh, functions. And draw takes the parameter window, which each uh, thing, which we, which each thing that needs updated, which each Entity that needs updated, I suppose that's what I was looking for. Uh, should take because it needs to blitz stuff to the screen. Uh, so update and draw. Then uh, we say we want to tick our clock by FPS. Then we want to flip the screen. What we also want to do here is we want to say window dot fill zero 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 zero. And what this this will do is. When we're moving, if we don't call this, whenever our player's moving, it'll leave a trail of the image behind him. But if we're constantly filling the screen with black, then, or any colour, whatever the background, background colour is, like if it's white, then it'll not leave that trail behind. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, at the end of this tutorial, I'll show you what it would be like with the player moving if we didn't have that. So let's say here, uh, right, so we have this player class, and we basically want to be a class for a player to keep all our code uh, concise and clean and have everything as far apart as possible. So we basically import pygame here, we do the exact same thing here. Uh, we just define the path, even though we don't need to, I like to. Uh, from pygame.locals import all, we define a class called player, and we define its init method, which takes itself, of course, and it also takes screen. And then our screen is equal to the screen that we pass in. We're going to say self dot image equals pygame dot image dot load os dot path join img and logo dot png. Logo dot png is basically this. It's this. Remember this? Yeah, that's what it is. I was too lazy to go get another image or make another image. We're gonna say self dot x equals ten, self dot y equals ten, self dot width equals self dot image dot get width. Each surface has a, a few built in methods and one of them is get width and the other one is get height. Because don't forget an image or a screen or anything like that is a surface which is basically something that can be transformed or that can be drawn on. And that's why we can draw on the screen because the screen is a surface. Just think of it as a place where we can draw. Think of it as a, like a blank piece of paper. 
and we can draw on it as much as we want. And basically here we're getting the width of our image, self dot height equals self dot image dot get height. We probably won't use the, these in this tutorial, but we'll use them in probably the next tutorial if I'm going to teach what I think I'm going to teach. So then let's say, uh, I think that's it actually for what we need to add. Nope, we need to say self dot speed equals 10. That should be it. Let's say def update, which takes self. And then let's say pass for now. Def draw self screen equals done. If screen is done, I'll explain this in a second. Screen equals self dot screen. Uh, I call it screen, you could call this surface, uh, for the surface that you want to draw on. Uh, if a surface is not provided, then we call it screen. But you can also just provide your own screen, or your own surface. Uh, but basically, we, we default to none. This, that's what this does. I'll teach this uh, in another tutorial. But basically, it says uh, screen equals zero. So if no... Screen equals none. So if no value is provided for screen, then we set screen to none. And then here we say, if the screen's value is none, then set the screen parameter to our own screen. And then let's say, screen.blit, self.image, self.x, self.y. Build and run this. OS not defined because we did not import OS. And here we are. It drew it just fine. It drew it just fine. Uh, I don't know why it says code more here. Uh, I don't actually ever remember adding that in, but it's there for some reason. And uh, yeah. So now it, we can draw it fine because we're calling player.draw here. And even though we're not providing a screen value, if we provided screen, it would still work. This isn't part of the image, that's just part of Slim Text being derpy. Uh, it would still draw fine. And then if we say none, it'll still just draw it on the screen. Uh, but you can do whatever way you like. That's just the way I like to do it. Uh, we're calling draw here with our window. Then we're calling update, which we'll call player.update, which is here. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the reason I put them in this order, if you did level 2D, you'll probably understand, but, uh, uh, Pygame runs in this way. It first initializes everything. It like Python does. It reads all of your code, and then what it does is it forever. It will update and draw in that order. It will draw and then update. It will update everything and then draw it. So you could think about it as one tick for update, one tick for draw. I don't think you can do them asynchronously. Or synchronously, sorry. Uh, they have to be done. Uh, one after another, so it'll be update, draw, update, draw, update, draw, update the player's X position, draw with the new X, and that's how it works. And you won't notice any lag at all because it just runs fine. Well, then what we're going to say is keys equals pygame that keys that get pressed. I can't type, say if keys k a. Uh, LF keys K D LF keys K W pass LF keys K S pass. So what we did here is we say keys equals pygames that pygames that keys that get uh, pygame. Let me start again. Keys is equal to pygame.key.getPressed. Pygame.key.getPressed returns a list of keys pressed in an order. It's kind of like how the event queue works, like I explained. Uh, if you press key, or if you press the quit button, if we type keys and then press quit, they're processed as the keys get pressed and then quit. So they're in a, a, an event queue, because remember pygame.event.get returns the event queue. This returns uh, a list of the 
keys that the user has pressed in the order they pressed them. So if I pressed QWERTY, it would return QWERTY as a list. And it's stored in the list variable keys. Then we want to say, if what we do here is we say if keys has KA, so if we press the A key, this will be true. We can also say is true or uh, equal to true, but there's no point because uh, if it is in there, then it's true automatically. Then we want to do something. We'll want to move the player left. It does the exact same here, except checks for the D key. I'm going to pass. Does the exact same here, but we check for the W key. We pass keys. Elif, uh, elif, elif, if, uh, else if the key, the S key is pressed, we want to then we want to move them down. So it'll be left, right, up, down. So you want to say player X uh, take away equals. We want. Why do I say that? Self dot x take away equals self dot speed. Speed. Uh, self dot uh, x plus equals self dot speed. I cannot type today. Self dot y take away equals. I thought that. Yeah. Take away equals self dot speed. Self dot y plus equals self dot speed. Take away, take away something from the x moves it this way, adding moves it that way, taking something away from its y will move it up, adding something to its y will move it down. Always remember that. So then here, he's moving. Woohoo, yeah, we're moving our little image, our hero. Hooray! Huzzah! 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 Uh, yeah. I'm having too much fun. Um, yeah. So now we have our player moving. I think. Whoa! I think that is definitely it for this tutorial. Uh, my name is Zanatukeke, and I will see you in the next tutorial.